Hey guys, today I'm going to be giving you a first impressions look at Solus. Now this is an independent Linux distribution, so it's not based on any other uh, Linux distribution whatsoever. It comes from Ireland, is only available on 64-bit architecture, and uses the Budgie desktop. So I'm going to be taking a first impressions look at it, I'm going to be having a look at the user interface, and I'm going to be having a look at the repositories just to see what kind of software you can expect from this distribution. I'll also go through the settings and sort of give you an idea about how easy it is to configure and customize and use. Uh, but just before I start off with that, I would like to let you guys know that there is a new uh, episode of the podcast um, uploaded to SoundCloud, so I will of course put a link to that down in the description uh, if you want something that's a little bit more meandery and conversational. Okay, so let's get on with the video. So, as you can see here, this is almost defined by its use of the Budgie desktop. So I'm going to be looking at that um, with a degree of scrutiny today. But of course, you guys have been wanting me to take a look at this for quite some time because it looks like this is a distribution that wants to build a solid GNOME desktop, but without the GNOME interface. Because the GNOME interface, I mean, it took me a good couple of years for me to come around and actually really quite like it. But now that I, I, you know, a couple of years is like, I mean, if, if that's the case for many other people, that's really too much to ask. So I think that there is a very good case to be made to bring all the power that the GNOME desktop has into a more traditional desktop paradigm. And this seems to be what Budgie are going for in this sort of implementation of, of the desktop environment. Um, okay, so the big defining thing, and the thing I really like about the Budgie desktop environment, and I really would like to see this happen with with more distributions, with more desktop environments, is this notification thing they've done. Now, I've seen it with Pantheon OS as well, done in Elementary OS. Um, but it's just got no, it gives you a list of notifications, right? So if, for example, you know, you're downloading a bunch of files, um, you're chatting with a bunch of mates on Twitter, all that kind of stuff, right? You know, you can end up getting quite a few notifications, and it sometimes is just nice to have a list of them so you know that you don't miss anything important that's coming through your system. This is a new phenomena, and it seems to be inspired by Android, and I think Android Android do it really quite well. So I would like to see that kind of functionality come to the desktop environment. This looks like it's it's how it's going to come about. Um, since I'm still on XFCE as my daily driver, I uh, it, it could be some time before I actually see that feature. Who knows? I might even switch desktop environments uh, later on down the line. I have no particular allegiance to anyone, if I'm completely honest. So. I really like that. I also like the applets here. It gives you readily available access to uh, your calendar, your volume, uh, your microphone settings. So if you've got like a whole bunch of microphones, if you've got a whole bunch of um, you know USB interface devices and all that kind of stuff, this is a great way just to, to quickly and easily manage them. Uh, dates available, your settings, you can shut down. This is this is your desktop environment settings all in in a single panel setup. It's all here. You can even customize the panel itself. You can theme it. Everything you want is right here on this little side panel. You got, you know, you got some applets. You can even go to the uh, control center as well, which is effectively, which is in every way the GNOME 3 control center. So you've got all of those great features, all of that that functionality as well as a traditional desktop environment, which is all pretty good. So you can set your keyboards, you can set your displays up, Bluetooth you know, your color settings. I really like the color settings in GNOME as well. Not all desktop environments have this setting, um, but you can sort of manipulate um, sort of the colors of your, your various colors of your system. So let's have a look at the the menu um, and the quick launch icons as well. So you've got the clock there. Uh, all of these notification icons, you just click on them. It doesn't matter. You don't have to click on any specific one. You can click on the off button and it brings up the panel. You can click on the network. Oh no, the network comes up. You can click on the notifications. So these three icons here on the right, it's just like a it's just a quick button here. So that's quite quite easy, quite straightforward there. So the menu. I quite like the menu as well, but it is a pretty just general menu. I, it doesn't seem to have favorites unless you can add one to a favorite. No, I'm right clicking now. Um, the menu is pretty straightforward. You can search. Um, so you can look for the software center, for example, um, or you can look for uh, mouse stuff. Uh, what does it come with? It comes with the gedit text editor, the calculator, so it seems pretty comfortable with GNOME 3. It comes with the transmission BitTorrent client, it comes with Thunderbird, which I believe is actually still using GTK2, Firefox and HexChat. HexChat, very nice IRC channel. Um, this YouTube channel has an IRC channel, so there are uh, there's a link to that on the channel page if you're interested. So it doesn't come with LibreOffice pre-installed, which I like, because 
there are a number of Office suites available for Linux, and um, and it would be nice to have the choice. Although, um, the well, I'll get to the repositories and the choice as well. There's a VLC media player, which, even though more and more distributions are shipping with as default, MPV, best player. It's lightweight, it just gets straight to the point, nice shortcut keys, does everything you want it to do. Uh, VLC, i got to say, they're sort of... They're sliding behind now. They used to be the go-to. Um, they used to be the go-to media player, and I think part of the reason is because it's so cross-platform available um, that it was like, oh, I know VLC, I know that works, and they'll, you know, they'll they'll be familiar with it from Windows. They'll bring it over, and then you, you know, you sort of use it uh, on Linux, and then you'll start getting more acquainted with Linux-specific software and start sort of seeing some of the benefits that other uh, other pieces of software might have. So what I like here as well is they haven't overdone it on the software tools, right? Every other item in this menu doesn't appear to be a setting. I mean, there are actually there are quite a few. Um, but for the most part, it does seem like a really easy menu just to sort of to navigate around. The, I don't know about all, you know, when you've got like all of the, um, all of your like, is it recent programs perhaps in uh, up here? Um, but I don't know. I think I'd have to sort of get used to this menu. This menu is all right. This menu is fine. It's pretty much just like a bog standard menu. You can even press the uh, the meta key, the Windows key, the function key, and it pulls up the menu. So if you just want to sort of start typing, just pull up the menu key and just uh, and do that. And that's it. Like I mean, the budgie desktop, really simple, really straightforward. Not much to really complain about. Um, I like it. I really do. I like it. It's a great GTK3 based desktop environment as an alternative to GNOME. Um, I really like it because it is basically a GNOME shell. In fact, it may even be a GNOME shell. It may just be that they've taken GNOME and then they've uh, just just added a new shell on top of it, which would have been how I'd have done it and which would have been a great, uh, you know, which, which, which is great. So uh, let's get on. So you've got uh, all the settings and stuff here. Uh, let's have a look at the the old software center, because that to me is like the so what what's in the software repositories for me is the most part the deciding factor in in my daily driver in my Linux distribution. If I can't use the software that I want, and if I don't feel like I can just pull down a piece of software reliably and just get you know get to using it, I'm probably going to pass this over. Now that being said, my workflow is not everybody's workflow. And sometimes when I'm setting up someone else's computer, I deliberately seek out basic desktop environments and basic software setups. And that's why I often go with Lubuntu um, and LXDE because LXDE is a very simple desktop. It's, and because it's simple, it's user friendly. And uh, you know uh, that's a really important sort of point to recognize when it comes to user interface design is that less is easier like uh, most people do not want to tweak every sort of aspect of their system people like me do but the vast majority of people don't so you need desktop paradigms that suit both of those workflows and all you know and as many workflows as possible so um this is the software center I like the software center. It's straightforward. It's simple. You know, like you guys can take a look at that software center, and you know exactly what kind of stuff you need to click on to install what specific pieces of software. Um, it's not super, super straightforward and easy, but it's about it's close. So, for example, if you go to the desktop stuff, most people aren't really going to understand this this sort of ca these categories, the GNOME desktop and all that kind of stuff. I don't really know how you'd make that more user friendly, but um, sort of when you've got it next to like games, and you've got console emulators, strategy games, and all this kind of stuff, um, it, it it does seem like you've got something that's particularly quite user friendly and suitable for new users, right next to something that you'd want more established users to have access to. But that's again minor nitpick, if if a nitpick at all, really, just an observation. Um, there aren't many games here as well. They're like the software there this is not an expansive software repository. Um and I think that's really important to to sort of to, to sort of recognise off the bat. Um but it's not terrible. It's not bad, you know, it's it's there are plenty of distributions out there that are worse. For example, you can install LibreOffice, as you can see all those LibreOffice packages there. You can also install Abbey Word. Um there's Focus Writer. So you've got plenty of Office choices there just not like all of them not the kind of choices that you might expect if you've been spoiled with the repositories of arch and and even the aur if you're happy to use it 
So there is a decent amount of software here. Uh, in fact, what I do, my personal litmus test for the the sort of the the quality and the amount of, of software in the repositories is to look at open broadcast software because that's a very new piece of software that is really quite good. And a lot of distributions that don't keep on top of the repositories, um, you know, what's in them, uh, often sort of overlook this. But as you can see, OBS Studio version 0.14.2. I can't. Remember, I don't think that's the newest. So I think that is a little bit. Um, behind, but it's um, it's there. It's you know, and it's good that it's there. That's like a quite an important piece of software to have. Also, I do use Simple Screen Recorder, which is actually what I'm using to record this video now. Something tells me I have yeah, I have two S's in there. There we go. Simple Screen Recorder, a feature rich. This is a brilliant screen recorder if you're looking. It even records GIFs. And a lot of people know that it's a really good screen recorder because it's very very commonly used and I almost always check repositories to see if it's in the repositories or whether or not I'm going to have to bother with like a third party PPA or or or, or, or you know like some kind of package issue but no it's uh, it's right there. So even though like I don't see this as having a massively expansive uh software repository to me it seems like more curated and for new users and for people getting to grips with Linux I think that's really good. Um, I, I would grumble about it because that's the kind of user I am, but for the kind of user that would appreciate Solus, um, I think it serves those needs really, really well. Like Solus has decided, you know, these this is, you know, like what they want their, their system to, to do, what, how they want their system to look, what kind of software they want running on their system, and they've geared their system specifically towards those use cases. Now, you know, like f for the most part on Linux distributions, you can, you know, with the right know-how and the time and the effort, you can get any distribution to do something that any other distribution would generally do. There are, of course, exceptions, but um, if you want, like, op you know, like um, distribution A to look and feel like distribution B, the chances are you can get ninety percent of the way there with with um, minimum hacking. So, but yeah, this is great. I really like it. Solid desktop environment. Uh, I've run into zero bugs. It seems like quality control is quite high up these guys' priority uh, list of priorities, which is good. We need distributions with good quality control. It seems to have a nice curated repository with lots of current up-to-date software. So it, it seems that they they add new software in that people like to use, but they also remove stuff that's older and outdated. Um, I have also actually checked in the software repositories. They do have key pass X, which is the password manager I use. So I don't know if if any of you guys use the other password managers, um, then you might want um, you know if any of you guys use that password manager, then uh, then rest assured it's in there. Um, everything else seems just like it's it's like an a, or you know a very gnome three esque distribution. Um, what else uh, is there? Uh, you can also install actual Google Chrome as well. So I'll um, I'll just pop this up in the third party. Now there's only two third party applications you can install. Google Chrome, so if you want proper up-to-date Flash support, it's there. Although Adobe have released that they're going to continue fully supporting, or mostly supporting Flash uh, for Linux natively, so you can still use Firefox and Flash if you want. To be honest, these days I've um, kicked Flash to the back burner and deactivated it. Um, and I think, in a, you know, there's a good chance that in a couple of years' time, uh, I might even just fully install it. In fact, there is only one use for Flash that I have. One use, and it's a really niggly, stupid use that I don't use very often. It's uh, to edit YouTube videos. If I, like, upload a YouTube video and I realize there's a mistake or something that needs cutting out, I use the YouTube clip cutter uh, tool that you can do so that you can actually cut a bit out of a video and the video still is at the URL. You don't have to re-upload or anything. And that's a really useful feature that YouTube have, but... Um, it requires Flash to use, and that's the only time I ever use Flash. But you can get Spotify, Spotify. you can get Google Chrome there as well. Um, this seems to be like their first big proper release, according to DistroWatch, which means that, uh, or which at least indicates to me that there, there will likely be more third-party software available in that little repository there as time goes by. Um, but I look forward to this, seeing this distribution grow. This is really good. If you want up-to-date desktop environment with with a nice note, you know, with a nice layout, with nice note, I love the the notifications there. I think that's amazing. That's that's genius. Beautiful. Brilliant. You know, this is this is like I'm I'm really happy with the state of Linux distributions these days because uh, it seems that 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 more and more um, 
developers are just sort of you know incredibly in touch with with what i think the linux platform needs right now and i think we're making uh progress in leaps and bounds and you know i i uninstalled my windows partition about maybe a year ago don't regret i don't regret it for a second the closest the closest thing i will will have to regret is maybe there'll be a triple a game uh that will be brought out deus ex mankind divided and the new hitman game i kind of had that little bit of a oh i wish i wish they brought that out on linux but you know for all intents and purposes i i think that if you compare linux now to linux five or six years ago and linux five or six years ago wasn't bad i mean i was using it as my daily driver back then but but man i you know the the future is exciting that's, that's, that's what I can say. So I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. There is, of course, the latest podcast will be linked down in the description below. Um, we talk a little bit about uh, the software, uh, the browser add-ons that we use with uh, my co-host Max in this one. Um, and also uh, I go over the Steam controller a little bit. Some of the first impressions uh, I've been playing around with the Steam controller. Um, cool. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.